can I bring brains into the world in a fun and interesting way where people can say brains are cool? They are anatomically correct. All the bumps are in the right place. All the grooves are in the right place. And the 12 pairs of cranial nerves absolutely thrill me. So today we all say together, brains are cool. I cannot tell you how special this is for Bloomington. This is the kind of a thing that uh, Bloomington does well. A serious topic done in a whimsical way. This is going to get the word out about brain health. It's going to get the word about art. It's going to get out the word about how community character and commerce are part and parcel. Us supporting it was and easy, everybody at once, no brainer. Last night when they were all here, someone said, oh, they're all here. And I've been waiting for that moment. So I just got up and didn't look. I just went up to the top of the bleachers and looked out over the field and I just wept. It was so beautiful for me. It's, it's what I'd been waiting for. And, and it's just, you know, now it's a gift that I get to give to the world. It's going to bring awareness to the brain as an organ, to its function, to its health, to its care and feeding. I think any big art project like this uh, makes connections between people. This whole project is kind of like a metaphor, you know, for what we're trying to do. It connects out into the community, you know, just like a nervous system. So, you know, a healthy community is like a healthy brain where all the cells are communicating with each other, you know, and having, you know, something positive and some good contribution. I look at all these brains and I just see all these different visions of people what they think about brains and their functions and what they mean to them and it really it just shows you from an artistic perspective all the different ways you can look at one thing and to be able to you know visually show people these ideas with the brain being the center of it all and how we can be creative and how we can share information so i love the educational aspect of of doing a brain and to be able to uh, coordinate that with the creative, imaginary uh, aspect of, of, of the arts, of being an artist, and to kind of fuse that together. One of the things that I think that any art piece, if it truly is defined as art, should be representing is an option for communication, an opportunity for communication. And this, I'm hoping, will allow people to talk about this particular condition. It's, it's something that is prevalent in our society. People are dealing with bipolarism and living with bipolarism. And to understand what they're feeling and what they're experiencing is really critical to having them part of our, the, the greater culture. Uh, my brain is the senior brain. It's uh, Home Instead as a sponsor. And um, I wanted to focus on the good parts of the way our brain works as we age, like all the memories that float back that are delightful that um, you know we can reminisce about things and what I love about it is the fact that you have a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere and how we're wired Jill's helped me with that to understand the wiring my being dyslexic I'm wired a certain way uh, I have a lot of strengths and I have a lot of challenges for me, when I hear Joe Lamantia start talking about, well, yeah, and when I did the cerebellum, and I hear another artist talking about, well, it was really my motor, my motor cortex that was I was working with, and it's like these people are using the language of the brain, which is exactly what I wanted. It's it makes it it possible and, and palatable and, and approachable and interesting, and and so I, I couldn't be happier with how it's going. Our right hemisphere is here and now. The left side of the brain is thinking about not only industry and work, but the past and the present. So we have a water wheel harnessing the, the river as past technology, and then our rushing river, linear river as opposed to our meandering river. Certainly I'm very much uh, engaged with this idea that we need to understand brain health. I love Jill's message with that. And I think it really inspires people to appreciate art. Public art is really um, a wonderful, wonderful way to engage an entire community. I 
am dedicating the Brain Extravaganza to a wonderful woman who was in our community, Dr. Catherine Domingo. Uh, she died last year of breast cancer at the tender age of 37. Uh, she loved Bloomington, and she was one of my, my great uh, uh, cheerleaders, head cheerleader for me, and really with her inspiration, she always said to me, Jill, don't be afraid to go out on a limb. That's where the fruit is. This is the Lotus Brain. Jill and I dedicated this to Cat Domingo. She loved the Lotus Festival. She was an enthusiastic volunteer. The instrument of the drum represented uh, an element that every culture had. So we turned the brain into a drum. We used the fiberglass top, uh, creating like a, to look like a skin uh, roped to the base of the drum. These black hands are my mother's hands that I enlarged and we put multiple hands representing people and cultures from around the world. Well, I'm a fiber artist, and so any time that I approach an artwork, I tend to do it from a fiber touchable perspective. And so I've tried to incorporate my um, aesthetic into this. And so uh, what I did is I first of all coated the two sides with felt. And so there's a warm fuzziness to the feel, even though some of the objects are very, especially on the depression side, are very cold and harsh and almost drained of color. And the whole brain is made predominantly out of reclaimed and recycled materials. The flowers themselves are made out of sweaters that I've upcycled and cut into pieces. The vines are old baling wire that I've wrapped in yarn and the butterflies are all, all needle felted creations. I think if you were to look at your brain, which is difficult, uh, you would see that it actually does this. It lights up when it's totally enlightened. That's all the neurons flashing, going, uh, you know, I'm content, happy. And you notice that both sides are working in, in harmony. So that means that all systems are go. The point of it was to do a map of the brain and isolate different areas around the brain that uh, did different functions. And then, of course, show a difference between the right and the left side of the brain. If it's a zigzag like a lightning bolt, then that's pain. And if it's a zigzag like disease, then that's sleep. So then, the, you know, where they, where they pierce the brain and there's like a, it's either a, a, a bullseye or like a reaction to, to the stimuli. And then this is somatic metaphor of just like hanging limp and then going from gray to black is like going to sleep. So, you know, that's the two different interpretations of the zigzag. And then this is kind of like the absence, this negative lightning bolt here is kind of the absence of pain. This is my brain on limestone. It's uh, planar dust from the Bybee Stone Company. So dust that came off of uh, machines that are uh, over 100 years old, still in operation. I put a few crinoids hidden in spots in there for fun. Two of my students at Ivy Tech did a brain that's all about connections. When we got it, we didn't know what we were going to do, so we did a lot of brainstorming to come up with what we wanted. And we actually had two brains present. Uh, Amy, she had her brain with us, so we were able to look at one brain while working on ours. So we, uh, what we came up with was the healthy brain, and we wanted to describe the connections. of. So, so in the front, we have hands that connect the two sides together. The, br uh, the bridge also connects us, so it connects the right and the left together. I'm amazed by all the different kinds of brains and everything, you know, people are associating with them and all the art and I just think it's a, an amazing thing that's bringing all these people together. I think this is, this is fantastic. It's a great thing for Bloomington and just a big thumbs up all the way around. It's just a great marriage of art and science uh, and community and uh, we're happy to have it here in Bloomington. It's about us, it's uh, about learning about ourselves and our brains in a curious and interesting and fun way and the magnitude of these brains. They're beautiful. There's no question in my mind that if we want it to spread, it will spread. But in the meantime, we're just gonna enjoy it in Bloomington. From my heart to your heart, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the brain extravaganza. Yeah.